three Nigerians are among other foreign nationals who on Tuesday suffered from fresh xenophobic attacks on foreigners in different locations of Witbank, Mpumalanga province, South Africa, and the Nigeria community has confirmed that. The national spokesperson of the Nigeria Union South Africa, Odefa, said that the attacks started in the early hours of the morning. Uh, Tuesday's attacks are coming on the heels of efforts by President Muhammadu Buhari and Siri Ramaphosa to ensure they found amicable and lasting solution to the xenophobia in the country. Such peace efforts uh, saw Buhari visiting Ramaphosa and holding a town hall meeting with the Nigerian community. Groups made up of co community members and taxi drivers went to different areas in Witbank, attacking foreign-owned businesses and foreigners. Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoinka, in an exclusive interview with Plus TV Africa, narrates his encounter in South Africa. There's some kind of collective uh, psychological warp. I think in the makeup of today's South African, that warp has got to be addressed. We've got to speak very frankly about that. It's something which I have personally experienced, by the way. Okay. And if I have, on more than one occasion, you can imagine what the ordinary people have also experienced. I was nearly sent back uh, from the airport. Yeah. In fact, it happened twice. Uh, yeah. And the hostility by this, even these young uh, immigration officers. In fact, as it happened on that flight, the um, Nigerian ambassador or high commissioner was, and he even intervened. And it had to do with the immigration, of, immigration officer, a young woman misreading the date on the passport and insisted we had to, uh, I had to go with them to the, um, to, the, um, to the immigration office. And walking along the way, because she kept looking, I was watching her, she kept looking at it, you know, this. I saw the moment when she realized she'd made a mistake. And then she flipped over the passport and saw that it was Nigeria anyway, and continued her march. We went up to the office, um, <clears throat> there was also a friend of mine, lawyer, who went with us. It was quite a scene. Went to the office. I pointed out what I felt was the error, and fortunately, some other senior immigration officers recognized uh, me and came and saw what it was. And they said, No, 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 this is okay. This girl, her attitude, just because of that passport, it was so hard, it was unbelievable. If I reached the point, as we were leaving, I said to her, you see, I said, I noticed when you saw that, uh, that you'd made a mistake. I said, why did you bring us? You needed to see how she fled up. And I said, I'm going to report you. You said, yes, this is mine. Yeah, take a look, take a look. I was looking at the, um, so I was, you know, pacified by the senior people and the ambassador who were around to sleep. This happened to me there. It's not the first time. There was another time I was kept there. Uh, I was coming from the States at that time. And there was, uh, I didn't have a, uh, a visa. I was an emergency thing. I was invited for a lecture. In fact, it was in connection with Mandela's celebration. And I was assured there would be a visa waiting for me at the airport. I don't go anywhere I'm not invited. <laughs> I was assured there'd be a visa there. Anyway, cut a long story short. It took Gasha Michelle, I was already on my way out, to Gasha Michelle to intervene. I said, do you know what you're doing? <laughs> you know who this is? And she raised hell with them. I spent about close to nine hours wow. at the airport. I just said, I am leaving here. And after that episode, I did not go to South Africa. I turned down invitations over nine invitations in two years, I said, I'm not I'm never stepping into this, your country again. I went, give the lectures. I said, I'll do anything for Mandela, his memory, and so on. For me, he's my avatar. I said, okay. but at the end of the lectures, I took my luggage to the lectures. Straight from the lectures, I went to the airport and left. I said, I'm dusting the feet of this country. The Nobel laureates are just young uh, South Africans not to allow the apartheid experience to hinder their relations with other African nationals.
I've spoken to other South Africans, including some young people who do straightforward business, you know, contributing to that society. And the treatment they receive, there's something very serious. That's why I use the word warp. Is something has happened, I think, maybe as a result of the apartheid experience, a suspicion that other people are coming to treat them like, you know, the Second Boers class. treated okay. them, a kind of victim complex, maybe also aspects of Franz Fanon's theory about how uh, victims tend to victimize other victims okay. even much more than their own oppressors. It's something which, let's speak frankly, South Africans have to deal with. One is not denying that Nigerians themselves can be a handful outside. Mm. We know that. But then there are other nations also who are more than a handful in other societies.